you build software to like help people like with CRM and ERP and writing emails. So like that's how I think about technology, not like robots, you know, taking over the world. And so I, I think my brain isn't wired down the down some of this the more sci-fi dystopian, you know, you know, kind of uh, scenarios. I I totally you know trust and appreciate that people are you know thinking through those things, worried about them. Um, I think that they sometimes underestimate the the you know our ability to go and actually like correct uh, for those risks, um, whether that's directly in the things that we control or within the AI models themselves. Um, so so sometimes I think that like there's an incredible imagination on the downside and a very limited imagination on how you would then go and mitigate those things if if those if those were starting to occur. Um, and I also think they they sometimes underestimate like all the risks that already exist today in the in the world that we've we've found ways to put guardrails around like ha- half the scenarios that that people sort of you know say that ai will do to us um you could literally do tomorrow with one bad guy if you if you just if you just wanted to and the world somehow has found ways to prevent those things from happening um and so i don't know i i'm it's not intuitive to me why ai all of a sudden you know, sort of becomes the unlock for those things to now occur at a at a greater scale. But um, uh, you know, clearly, clearly, this is a a space that is going to warrant a ton of work um, and uh, and capability around. But but I think all that said, I would I would just say like more regulation, uh, more auditability, um, uh, you know, more controls being put in place around you know AI models. Those are only good things um, because at some point there is this is a superpower that we need to have have guardrails around. Yeah, I, I think we have the same uh, person in both of our ears on this AI doom topic. And I, uh, I'm i not totally sure where I net out on it. It's, uh, I just know there's a lot of smart people that like I trust their intuition. I too didn't grow up with sci-fi. I, I was like reading baseball cards as a kid. So I sort of <laughs> missed this whole, this whole thing. But there are a lot of smart people that believe, and I've realized I have a hard time internalizing probabilities after the Trump election and COVID, right? I sort of realized low probability tail events. I just, I don't have the right calibration around that stuff. And so, uh, yeah, there are a lot of smart people that are concerned. And so I guess it makes me very curious, but I don't know if I have the intellectual horsepower to go totally down the rabbit hole and think about all the different permutations of this stuff. The only concern I have is that, um, is that those 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 a lot of those fears are adjacent to also the belief that AI sort of takes over all uh, aspects of life um, as as well and and I, I I tend to think that's sort of like not as not giving humans as much credit uh, or and or just maybe even a more basic level not appreciating that humans just like humans more um, than than robots and um, and that we're a species that is going to continue to want to find human connection. Um, and so like a lot of the things that we believe like, wow, like AI will totally replace X category of thing. My name is Rashad and I'm the producer of the Logan Bartlett show. I wanted to take a second, and let you know that we have some awesome guests booked for future episodes. If you've enjoyed the content so far, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out. Now back to the episode. Wow. Like AI will totally replace X category of thing, um, is like, no, because actually like I want to be able to call a lawyer. And, and just like, I just need to, I need somebody to patiently walk me through this contract at the end of the day and what risk I'm taking on. And so the most knowledgeable, the friendliest, you know, AI bot in the world will never replace w- why you call a lawyer at the end of the day or, or why you, you talk to a therapist or why you go to a restaurant and, and want to, you know, have, have really great service. Like, and so, so I think a lot of, a lot like these, these things are, are all under the, usually under the umbrella of like AI takes over everything. And it's just like, no, actually, I think that that like like the, the base case is we use AI as a productivity boost. It acts as a way to connect dots on information at a thousand times faster than a human can. Um, and um, uh, and then and then we just all get this sort of you know new capability that we can leverage. Um, and so that that's the that, that's sort of I think the base case, and I think we will put the right kind of guardrails. Like the market will will end up creating guardrails around this technology, whether it's through government action or just um, you know self regulation. Uh, I I I, yeah, I think I think people all equally understand that we don't want the risky scenarios to to be high probability, 
And so uh, ultimately, I think that that we will begin to to solve a lot of the, the potential risk on that. I sure hope you're right. I, every time I think I understand something, I hear a story like I guess one of these I forget if it's character AI or replica or one of these things. But like their subreddit, there's an entire section dedicated to uh, the emotional trauma when you go through when they go through an upgrade and like how to emotionally deal with the connection you built around the the AI and then like what you do restarting that relationship. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. So I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I hope you're right in, in all of this. But I uh, yeah. the human connection thing, I, I, I mean, you look at some of the adoption of these these tools and these chat, it's just crazy how, how many people are just communicating only with building friends with these different characters and all that. And I, I but, but I, I, now I'm really freelancing on opinions on this. I've like thought this through exactly like now six seconds. Perfect. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Uh, I think that's another element though, where, where our relationship with AI is still being figured out. Um, so, so as an example, um, uh, you know, like, like that set of scenarios, uh, represents like the beta testers of 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 humans interacting with AI at a more personal level, and what we're finding out is like actually there are real risks of developing that deep of a connection with something that somebody controls a one computer one line of code in a computer and can upgrade for everybody. And so like so like like probably in a few years from now we will have to all evolve to either decide do you build those kinds of relationships with AI. And what's the con- what's the social contract with the enterprise that creates those AI bots? Um, or actually, is that actually too risky to build that kind of relationship because they do get upgraded, and and we actually have to treat these things as more ephemeral, you know, kind of interaction tools? Um, and I would just say that these are the like that set of scenarios is the untested, uncharted water uh, of of this versus like the like the stable equilibrium that's going to exist in ten years from now. That's the episode title, by the way. Aaron Levy encourages incels to touch grass. I, I, I just saw <laughs> go outside, go make some human connections, stop doing this. 